What's up, everyone? Today, I'm going to teach you a free and simple way to determine the value of a home. I have my computer right in front of me, and I'm going to share with you my screen so you can walk through this with me step by step. If you're in the market looking to purchase a home, this video will show you how much your dream home is worth and how much you should offer. And if you are a homeowner curious about the value of your own home, this video will give you the answer too. If this is your first time watching my videos, my name is Elisa and I'm a house flipper in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've been flipping houses for four years now and being able to estimate the value of a home correctly is a very important aspect of my business because not estimating the value correctly could put a lot of my investment at risk. So today, I'm going to share with you the exact process that I go through when I try to determine the value of a home. Before we start the process, I want to answer a question first. Should you rely on Zillow or Redfin estimate for a home value? The answer is absolutely not, because the estimate from Zillow or Redfin, sometimes they are accurate, but more often than not, they are off and they can be very misleading. I've noticed that sometimes when there are more recent sales, close to a certain property and the recent sales have similar price points, then the estimates tend to be more accurate because Redfin and Zillow have more data points to use. But when there are fewer recent sales in an area or if the recent sales have a wide range of prices, then the estimates could be totally off. As I've mentioned before, location is the number one factor in determining the value of a home. But within each location, there could be many micro neighborhoods and each neighborhood could have their own desirability and different school districts. It's difficult for Redfin or Zillow to differentiate the different neighborhoods, so sometimes they use comparable sales that are too far away from the subject property. Also, there's no way for Redfin or Zillow to gauge the condition of a property. In the same neighborhood, a fixer-upper could cost 10 to 20% less than a fully remodeled home, so that could be a big reason why the estimates are off. So the bottom line is, you can look at the estimate from Zillow or Redfin, but don't ever rely on it. Here, I want to point out that I live and I do business in the Bay Area, which is one of the most expensive areas in the country in terms of the home prices. And I know a lot of the viewers are in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, and the home prices in your area might be a lot cheaper than what I'm showing you here, but it doesn't matter because the method is the, exactly the same and you can use this method to determine the value of the homes in your area too. So if you have your computer or your phone in front of you, let's walk through this process together. I just picked out this random listing on Redfin. The address is 2634 Media Way, San Jose. So you can see that this is the whole listing. And you notice that the Redfin estimate is 1.458 million. And the same exact address on Zillow, it has an estimate of 1.5 million. So there's $50,000 in difference in pricing between Redfin Estimate and Zillow Estimate. And let's run our own analysis and see which one is more accurate. The first step is to do research and understand the subject property. Now let's look at the information on Redfin. You can pretty much get the same information on Zillow, but I use Redfin because the data is directly pulled from MLS, the multiple listing service, and it's usually more accurate. First, you see that this house is a three bedroom, two bath house, 1584 square feet. And it was built in 1961. The lot size is almost 6,200 square feet. So three bedroom, two bath, 1,500 square feet is actually a standard size in this area. And the home is 60 years old, which is pretty common too. From here, I immediately jump onto the schools. So you can see that the school ratings here are 556, 
which are not the best schools. They are kind of middle of the road. The good schools are at least seven and above. And so that tells you that the schools here are not as desirable as it could be. In the Bay Area, homes in good school districts can sell for a couple hundred thousand more than the homes that are not in the best school districts. So I usually pay a lot of attention to the ratings of the schools. The next step is to look at the pictures of the home. So you look at the curb appeal, the exterior of the home, and the front yard. So you can see here the exterior looks fine but it's not recently updated you don't see um, a, any sign of fresh coat of paint or any um, recently updated like the fascia board here looks very traditional and the roof is this reddish color which is not a neutral color that's popular right now and the curb appeal looks okay the front lawn is pretty lush, but there's some bushes covering part of the house and it's not very welcoming. You go through all these pictures and you can see that this is the front. So now you can see the interior of the house and you can see that the house actually is kind of dated inside, like the this, I assume, is the living room and it's definitely not staged. The floor looks like laminate floor and there's no recess lights. There's a, a dated ceiling fan. And the pictures are not even professionally taken because they are vertical. Usually professional photography is horizontal. So you don't even get to see the full view of the entire room and the fireplace is old bricks and it looks dated too. And there's carpet in this, probably is the family and dining room. So the house is pretty dated. And then this looks like an addition, which is a sunroom. And then this is the kitchen. In the kitchen, you can see that um, it's very dated. The cabinets are old and the countertops are tiled and the backsplash is the same tile. This to me seems like the original kitchen that was, um, that was built with the house from back in the 1960s. And the appliances are all white, which are traditional. And this light fixture is very old too. So now the bedroom side of the house. So you notice that the window seems to have been updated and there's carpet in the rooms, which is not very desirable nowadays. And they have track lighting. It doesn't look that great either. These bedrooms all look similar. And then in this bedroom, the closet door is dated with this brass edge so you notice that we didn't even see any bathroom photos usually when they don't show you bathroom photos it means the bathrooms are pretty bad and we also didn't see any backyard photos so the backyard is probably not well maintained either then let's look at the description of this home Usually when the home is recently updated, the seller will put in the description all the upgrades that they've done recently. So it can tell you a lot of information too. So here it tells you that this is in a desirable, a nice neighborhood and it's well maintained, which means the home hasn't really been updated. It's usually the home is maintained, but it's not recently remodeled. And as I mentioned, it does say the home has double pane windows, which is nice. And it has recessed lights in the living room, central heating and air conditioning, which is good too. And then there's a sunroom in the back, which we saw in the pictures. Usually sunrooms are not permitted as living space, so it's more like a bonus. And then the front lawn is actually fake grass. So 
it's pretty clear that this home hasn't been recently updated. So when you look at comparable sales in this area to try to determine the value of this home, you want to compare this home to homes that are similar, not recently updated. The next step is to look at this home on the map. So you put in the address here in Google Maps and you look at the surrounding of this home on the map. So here you can see that this is a very residential area. You don't see any big commercial buildings or any apartment complexes. So a commercial building I see here is this landscaping company. But when you go to this landscaping company in more details, you can see that it's actually it's um, someone's home. So someone's using their home as their business address. So it's not actually a commercial building. And then you can see that you want to look at um, there's no commercial buildings nearby and there's no apartment apartments nearby because these could negatively impact the value of a home. If a house is too close to a commercial building, then people think that it's not as safe. And then you want to look at if there's any big streets nearby, especially if the home backs up to a main road or if it's on a busy street, then the home value is negatively impacted because there's street noise and it's also not as private and safe. So the main roads here are Bookson Avenue and Meridian Avenue, which are pretty far away from this house. So that means this house is not really negatively impacted by those two main roads, which is a good thing. And then you want to look at if there are any schools nearby. And you can see that there is a presentation high school here, which is pretty far away. And there is a park here. Being close to a park is very good, but being close to but being close to a school can be good or bad. If it's close to an elementary school, it's usually desirable because people like the convenience of walking their kids to the school easily. But if it's close to a high school, then they may worry about the safety. And then you want to look at the street view of this home. So you can see that this is a pretty nice street. There are not a lot of cars parked on the street, which is good because it shows that each home um, most residents in this area are parking their cars in their garages because they are mostly homeowners and each home has only a few, like one or two residents. And if it was an area that are full of tenants, then you tend to see more cars on the streets because each house has more tenants than homeowners and the tenants don't have enough space to park in the garages so they would park on the street a lot and you also look at the neighbor houses and you can see that the neighbor houses are not are not that bad they are all a little dated but they are not run down by any means which is a good thing and you can also tell that the street is not busy it doesn't have the yellow line in the middle or double yellow line, that means the street is a busy street. We don't even see any traffic on this street view. Now that we've done our research on the subject property, it's time to find comparable sales. Before we move on to the comparable sales, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel so you will see more videos like this. You can start this with Redfin and if you need more data points, then you can use Zillow. So on Redfin, you can click on this Redfin Estimate. It takes you to this section where it shows you the Redfin Estimate for this house and it shows you some recent sales in this area and on this map. So this is a very good map because it gives you recent sales and it shows the proximity of those recent sales to this subject property. 
The subject property is this green dot. And you can see that there are six properties nearby that have recently been sold. So when you look at this map, you want to go from the closest recent sale to the ones that are further away. So for example, here, the most, the closest recent sale is this C, which is on the same street. So let's check this one out. You can see that this recent sale has three bedroom, two bath as well, and 1,486 square feet, which is very similar to the subject property. And we can look at this, the details of this home a little more. So it was built in, in the same year, 1961, and the lot size is exactly the same too. So that shows you that these two properties are so similar. And let's look at the pictures to see what this home was in, what condition was this home in. So the front yard looks a little better than our subject property, but it also has a long and it doesn't seem like the home has recently been painted. So that's pretty similar too. And then it has in the living room, it has furniture, but it doesn't look like staging furniture because when it's staging furniture, it usually makes you feel like the home is nicely designed and all the furniture is meticulously picked out. But this doesn't look like it. It seems like it's just furniture from the homeowner. The furniture is pretty traditional and the interior paint color is this yellow color which is a little old school because newer homes are usually painted either um, white color or um, gray colors that are more neutral. It does have recessed lights and double pane windows and the floors here look like hardwood floors that are kind of old but hardwood floors is always desirable. And then this is a dining room and then you can see that the home have some open concept because the kitchen and dining room are open and the dining room and the living room are also open. So that's desirable. Right? That's better than the subject property. This is another dining area. I think it could also be used as a family room with a fireplace. And then we get a little better view of the kitchen. So this kitchen looks like it's newly remodeled. You can see they have old shaker cabinets and it has a lot of recessed lights, new countertops and new backsplash and also the appliances are all stainless steel. So compared to this home, our subject property had a much uh, a very dated kitchen and older appliances. So this home should be worth more than the subject home in terms of the kitchen. You get more views of the kitchen and it shows the kitchen is actually also open. It's not enclosed with an island, which is desirable too. And then the bedrooms. The bedrooms are a little dated with um, older paint and this older flooring, older light fixture, but it's not, it's not that bad. And then we have pictures of the bathrooms. So this bathroom is, has been updated. You see the cabinets, uh, the cabinet is not very old and the, like the light fixture mirror are also not super old school. They are a little traditional. And the shower tiles are a little older too, but it's not original. It doesn't seem like this was from the 1960s. This is another bedroom. And then this bathroom seems to have been updated too, but it's not like it was updated in the last couple years. And then this is the garage. It has exposed ceilings, and, but the walls are finished and it seems like they were using it as a workshop um, 
yeah, it seems like they were using it as a workshop. And then the backyard is really nice. There is a nice patio, and then um, it has this long, pretty big lawn. So it's a very nice outdoor entertaining space. The fence, there's new fence, and then the other fences are in good shape too. This is a twilight view, which is nice too. So the backyard is pretty nice. So based on the pictures, it seems like this house is more updated than our subject property. So the value should have been higher than the subject property. So it was last sold for $1.31 million. And it was last sold Let's see when it was sold. So it was sold in June 2020. Because I'm familiar with this neighborhood and I know how the market has been moving recently. So I know back in, so when the home went pending or when the home was listed back in early May, the market was still a little slow because of the impact of the pandemic. So. Back in May, it was it went on the market and it actually didn't sell right away. You can see that there was a price change. They had to lower the price by fifty thousand, and then it finally went pending after two weeks, almost two weeks time. And then it was sold for actually even lower than the reduced price. So. You can see that the market back then in May 2020 was not very strong. So you want to include this factor into your consideration too, because the market back in 20, May 2020 was very different than the market right now, which is super hot. And I've had two recent flips that were sold 200,000 over asking price and there's a lot of demand in the market that pushes the price up. So you definitely want to take that into account. When you look at the comparable sales, you also want to look at the schools to make sure that they are of the same school district with the subject property. And you can see here, this comparable sale has the exact same schools. As you can see here that this house has been on Redfin for 14 days. It's a little bit different in the Bay Area than the rest of the country where the demand for housing is very strong. So when houses go on the market, they usually, a lot of them are sold within a week after being on the market. Actually, uh, when I sold my last two flips, I actually was able to sell them within one day after being on the market and the prices for those two projects were bid up by a lot. So this house being on the market for 14 days tells you that the price is probably a little too high. And even though the demand is very strong right now, no buyers are making offers for this home at the asking price. 14 days is a little long for the Bay Area. So that means when this home receives offers, probably the offers are not going to be as high as the asking price. So they would probably have to take an offer that's lower than the list price. This comparable sale that we were looking at is on the exact same street with the subject property, and it's very close to the subject property. So the sale price of this comparable sale is a very good indicator of the sale price of the subject house. And the fact that the subject property has almost exactly the same number of bedroom bathroom counts and this very similar square footage, same year built and same lot size. So that makes this comparable sale an even better indicator of the value of the subject property. But this comparable sale was sold back in May 2020, and that was nine months ago. So as we mentioned, the market has gone a lot better and the demand has 
been stronger than ever. So if the comparable sale was sold today, the price probably would have been a lot higher than 1.31 that was sold back in May. So this tells us that the market condition is better, but we also want to think about the condition of the house. As we mentioned, the kitchen of the comparable sale was fully remodeled and the bathrooms are updated. The entire house looks a little better than the subject property. So that means the subject property in terms of the condition is worth less than the comparable sale. So when you consider these two factors together, most likely the subject property when it gets sold is going to be sold at a similar price with the comparable sale, which is in the 1.3 million range. Let's look at another comparable sale, which is this F, and we can click on this listing here. So this house was sold for 1.53 million, and it's a four bedroom, two bath, 1783 square feet. So you can see this house is over 200 square feet bigger than the subject property and it also has one more bedroom. So the value of this home is definitely higher than the subject property in terms of the size. And then we can look at when this home was sold. So this home was sold very recent, which was November 2020, so about three months ago. And it was sold for 1.53. And Let's look at the pictures. So you can see the curb appeal is really nice. There's trees and bushes and very a very nice lawn. The home exterior probably wasn't recently painted, but it still looks very nice. This double door and double pane windows and this roof looks nice too. The house has a very big frontage, which is a desirable feature. And then the interior, you can see there's some tiles in the entryway, which is a little dated, but there's hardwood floors in the dining area. And this fireplace is a little dated. And this home wasn't professionally staged either. This is more like old school, probably furniture from the owners. This kitchen is pretty nice, even though it's not recently renovated, but it's an open kitchen and it's a very good size. So that's a very, very good thing for this home and it has recessed lights. It's pretty bright. And all the appliances are stainless steel and you can tell that they've been updated. So it's a very big kitchen and the home has a lot of recessed lights in the living area. And then in this family room, it has carpet and another fireplace. So it's a little dated, but this big slider is very nice. And then in the bedroom, it has carpet too. And um, the window is double pane. This is probably the master bedroom, which is of good size another bedroom and then the bathroom here this vanity looks a little dated it's it hasn't been remodeled recently and this vanity seems dated too you can tell from this countertop and then the round sinks and the mirror and lights are also not that new and then there's indoor laundry, which is very desirable. And it seems like it's actually inside of a bathroom, which is kind of interesting. And this backyard is nice. It has this really nice pergola and then a nice lawn. And you can see that the backyard is of really good size. Also, don't forget to look at the schools of this comparable sale. So again, this comparable sale share the exact same schools with the subject property. So in terms of the condition, this 
comparable sale is of better condition compared to the subject property because the kitchen is more updated and throughout the home it has more updated features than the subject property. As we mentioned, this home is also bigger, so in terms of the size, this home should have a higher value too. Because this home was sold a lot more recent than the first comparable sale that we look at, so the price here reflects much better. So the price here reflects the more recent market condition. Based on this comparable sale, because of the bigger size and the better condition, it also tells us that the subject property should probably be sold in the 1.3 million range. Let's look at one more comparable sale. So let's look at this B property. So you can see that the home was recently sold for 1.25 and it has three bedroom, two bath, almost 1300 square feet. So it's a little bit smaller than the subject property, but it has the same number of bedroom and bathroom counts. And when you look at the pictures, the front yard, it looks a little better than the subject property because of all the, the trees and the, the plants. It looks like it's well maintained and the exterior of the house doesn't seem like it's been recently updated. You can see the paint is of dated colors. And then the interior of the house, it has recessed lights, but the lights look very old. And it also has hardwood floors. It's got double pane windows too. And then the kitchen looks updated. This is definitely not a kitchen from the 1960s, but it's also not recently renovated. You see the countertops, I think it's granite countertops and backsplash. So the kitchen doesn't have the more popular quartz countertops and tile backsplash, which is the newer trend. But it does have a lot of recess lights, which is nice. And the flooring here is this old school square tiles, which is dated too. So this is a family room that has a fireplace that's made of bricks, which is a little old. And in this bedroom, it's a very good sized bedroom, has hardwood floors, which is nice, but this light fixture is dated. And then another bedroom. The bathroom is very dated. You can see these small square shaped tiles and this vanity and this medicine cabinet they all tell you that the bathroom hasn't been renovated for quite a while. This is a nice office. And then this bathroom also looks very dated. You can tell from this pink tub and then this tiled finish looks very old school. This seems like an addition that um, I'm not sure if it was permitted, it doesn't look like it. The backyard, it seems like they are growing vegetables here and they have some planter boxes and nice lemon tree. It's a pretty big backyard. From the pictures, we can see that this comparable sale is in very similar condition with the subject property, with the exception of the kitchen where it's more updated than the subject kitchen. The rest of the house seems like it hasn't been renovated for some time. Now let's check out the schools. This comparable sale also has the exact same schools with the subject property. We can also check out when this home was sold. If you scroll down to the sale and tax history, you can see the home was sold in December 2020, which is also very recent, so it shows that this home really reflects the current market value. So the home was recently sold for 1.25 and because it's almost 300 square feet smaller than the subject property, so the subject property should probably be sold at a higher price than this 1.25. This also gives us 
the range of 1.3 million where the subject property should be sold at. So based on the condition of this comparable sale, as we said, the condition is pretty similar, maybe slightly better just because of the updated kitchen. And this comparable sale also has the same number of bedroom and bathrooms and it's 300 square feet smaller than the subject property. So the sale price of this home is probably less than what the subject property can sell for. Based on this comparable sale, I think the subject property should still sell in the $1.3 million range. So based on the last three comparable sales that we've looked at, I think the sale price of the subject property is probably somewhere around $1.35 million. We've already looked at three comparable sales and they all point to the exact price range that the subject property should sell for, which is the $1.3 million, probably $1.35 million dollar range. Of course, you can look at more comparable sales like the ones on the map. And the more comparable sales you look at, the more confident you will be with your evaluation. For this exercise, I think we already have a pretty good idea of the value of the subject property because all the comparable sales that we used are very close to the subject property. They are in the immediate neighborhood within a quarter mile radius and they are of very similar condition with the subject property too. When you are doing this exercise on your own, it's very important to find comparable sales that are in the immediate neighborhood with the subject property. The closer they are, the more accurate they are. Like the first comparable sale we used is on the same street with the subject property, so that was a very good comp. Also, try to use comparable sales that are recent. The more recent, the better. I usually try to use comparable sales that are sold within the last three months. I hope this episode gives you a good idea of how to determine the value of a property. If you have questions, drop me a comment below. If you enjoyed this episode, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.